jam. Um, Moved second. by Mr. Lawrence. Second. Second by Mr. Barrett. Any discussion? All in favor of suspending the rules? It's a 6 0 vote. No, just note that Ms. Newman is not present. All right, if the clerk would read the additions, removals, and the substitutes, please. To the consent agenda, we're substituting item 5Q exhibit only resolution regarding bicycle rental with Biloxi Bicycle Works. We're removing 5R resolution authorizing amendment number 8 to letter agreement with Neil Schaefer. Adding 5BB resolution committee matching funds in the event that a Gulf Coast restoration fund grant is awarded to Mississippi Gulf Coast Pickleball. Adding 5CC resolution authorizing transfer of funds from the general fund to the account holding the Mississippi Department of Finance and Administration grant funds. Move the agenda as amended. All right, there's a motion by Mr. Lawrence to move the agenda as amended. Is there a second? I'll second. A second by Mr. Barrett. Any discussion? All in favor? That's a 6 0 vote for the clerk. All right, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I don't have a whole lot to report. Others have been raining a lot, and uh, we've had a pretty good numbers as far as gaming and sales tax. Uh, so we're uh, looking forward to uh, coming through these items on this agenda. And uh, where's Mike? But I think that concludes my report. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we don't have any departmental reports scheduled. This time we'll move to council reports. Mr. Lawrence. Yes. Uh, had a couple of people inquired about the sign coming off uh, Interstate I-10 about the time to repaint it or replace it. You know, you're coming in the city of Bucks, you want everybody to be happy, tourists, everything to be clean, and that sign's pretty old looking. So maybe you could redesign it. Modernize yeah, we, we've it. had some interstate coming up uh, on maybe Bayview. You, maybe, yeah, we've had some Bayview. conversations of, uh, uh, with our group to to uh, update that sign. Yeah, definitely. It's time. You know, and, sure. you know, of course, uh, make it, you know, uh, destination quality entrances and clean, cleanliness, that's going to be a big part of our you'll see in our departmental budgets to keep this place clean. Yeah. And uh, some, of not, you know, some of the things that we can do better and some of the things that other agencies who are responsible for things will we'll be asking them to do better or getting you know, some budget in order for us to do the whole job. And that's how on our agenda, as you'll see, be reflective in our departmental budgets coming up. I just think it's you know, something, when you come off the bridge, it really looks like something you need to fix up, make it look better. You know, a couple of complaints about Highway 90, which is saying still, I know it's been a problem around Gill and Porter, and like in the bays, you know, when people are making those turns, it kind of caused some of the cars to swerve and that, so. Unsafe and unsi unsightly. unsightly. You know, bring it up at the meeting and let you know hear about that so that you know what's going on. Yep. So I want to keep you updated with that. And somebody asked me on that, the flashing lights instead of having four-way stop, how much does it cost to have a flashing light on in the city of Luxor when they're off and on? Are, does it cost more money, less money? I had to cover them if you can believe Well, that. if it's just flashing and it's not, you know, not, you know, you look, you have one light on all the time, right? Whether it's flashing or not flashing. I would say it's cheaper. Yeah, well, I was just wondering, they just said if you're going to flash it that long, just put a four way stop sign. You want to report on that? So, I mean, huh? Okay. Yeah, we'd like to have a fine out. Yeah, okay. It costs $34 or $39. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a report on that. All right, that's it. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Mr. Gaines. Um, uh, just for Walt, um, can't be beat fencing. We have still some fencing, uh, some unreadiness about some fencing. Um, I know you told me that they were starting. I hadn't seen them yet. I've been getting a few calls. So you, can you give me a accurate date on uh, them starting to finish those uh, fencing? Okay, great, thanks. That completes my report. Thank you, Ms. Newman. Mr. Deming. Mr. Mayor, Mike, uh, the um, Harrison County Utility Authority, how much influence do we have over the types of trucks they use? We have a 500-year-old oak tree in my ward 
with a, a limb that hangs over the road, they've gone to larger trucks. And every time that truck goes under that tree, it hits that limb. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if there's anything we can do, you know, short of having to cut that limb down. I would, I would love to address it. It's on, it's over in, on Sunkist, North Country Club Road. Uh, Let me give you an address. We'll get the arborists to take a look at that. And there, there's a couple of places that, not just for the truck, but uh, on our shield drive, where it blocks the, 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 the site of the, uh, uh, yeah, well, I'll get the street in But anyway, there's a couple of places we need to take a look at, versus site as well as, as uh, clearance. We'll get uh, uh, Nolan, Eric Nolan to go by and take a look at what is the street? Yeah, it's on. Yeah, I'm going to give him the. It's 2348 North Sunkiss Country Club Road. It's. Okay. We'll do that. That's it. Thank you, sir. Mr. Glavin. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, one thing I want to discuss today, I know we're uh, coming up on these budget discussions and it'll come up specifically in those uh, talks, but uh, you know, our Biloxi Sportsplex, um, I've been attending some of the uh, tournaments that are being held out there. We have a, another major tournament coming up with the Hank Aaron tournament. This is a new series uh, that's uh, been initiated this year across the state and region. And, and I'm telling you, we, we really need to do an assessment of uh, this facility. This is our Biloxi Sportsplex where youth football is played and soccer and baseball and these tournaments. And, um, you know, we, we, we really need to look at synthetic infields, uh, some fencing, some upgrades in, in the uh, restrooms. Uh, some of the hand dryers are not even working properly uh, when I took a tour the other day. So, um, I've asked Director Bell to, to put some things together and maybe submit um, in, a, in a conversation. And, um, you know, hopefully we can move forward and do some significant upgrades moving forward. That concludes my report. Um, Thank you, Mr. Glavin. Mr. Glavin, Mr. Let me address we, me. that subject, quick, if you don't yes, mind. Mayor. I'm sorry, Mr. President. Uh, we had a conversation with uh, some folks at the school district about what it was going to take and some of the long-term, short-term kind of benefits. It's an immediate situation. Uh, it, it, during that conversation, we talked about actually taking one of the, uh, the four softball fields, converting to a second baseball with synthetic. Synthetic, you know, it, it could take a million dollars for one of the fields to be completely uh, infield as well as outfield, but that the bang for the buck is in the outfield. If you look at it, and uh, I think what they've done, they've just spent $650,000 on a band practice field. Uh, and I think uh, uh, President Jimmy Wiles talked, we talked at, uh, you know, baseball you know, uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact, and then, uh, you know, it could be 650000 to do that outfield, but if you look at it over 10 years, mm -hmm. what we're paying as far as grounds care and, and just the overall look and feel, so you can leave the side in the infield and in an hour and a half have it mowed and everything and will not be as fast. You know, they don't like, you know, uh, the speed with synthetic, synthetic in the infield. So I think there's a plan to do what we can and uh, at least to do the two ball fields that were positioned as good for some of the things that it, it, we had mentioned and hoped uh, about um, cotton states as well as the other opportunities to cash in, you know, with that, uh, that sports tourism. And I think that so we'll be addressing that in, in the departmental budgets and then spreading just what that load is over 10 years to have it done. It's got to be done perfectly and correctly to, to attract. And that's what we, you know, you know, the whole idea is to, to do the right thing, to spread it over the 10 year life cycle of it and then offset it by the cost it would take, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna take more effort to keep it first class and that was our intention. So I didn't mean to uh, jump, but we did have this conversation yesterday afternoon. Okay, thanks mayor for sharing that. That's exciting, you know, to hear there's commitment there. Thank you, and that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Yes, um, just a couple of things. Um, as probably everyone else still dealing with drainage issues because of the excessive amount of rain, and Pelican does seem to be getting caught up on their uh, debris pickup. There's still some stuff that's been out a while, um, but I'm in communication with them on that. 
and hopefully in the next few weeks um, we get that pick up. However, we do have some lots that I guess people have cleaned after um, the Zeta pickup went through that um, that don't have an, a mailbox or, or um, right. a trash can, so they're not Pelicans not picking them up. So I'm getting a list of those together to send in so we can get our city um, people to pick that. Some of those have been there, you know, well, a couple, two or three months now. And I know just because of the weather, we're working behind the eight ball majorly on a lot of things. But um, if we can just start getting that. Look, we talked about utility authority and what we, that was mentioned in the last last Thursday we had the thing. And, and there's going to be a, you know, a, a, a mailing or communications to everybody explaining what you need to do to get debris picked up. You know, and they have corrected, caught up with, with some of the things they were behind with. Also, when that was on my mind re regarding, uh, we, you know, in, in talking with the, uh, uh, you know, public works director, Billy Ray was talking about what we, what we do to, to in an emergency situation, they go pick it up. Our problem is if we send our trucks, especially on a Saturday, you know, it is a place, it, it, the, the, the dump is only open to 12 o'clock on Saturday. So what we're trying to work through, and we possibly could hire Pelican, some of their crews, they would be you know, available for as needed kind of pickup, put them on a contract basis, but have it loaded where they know what to do on Saturday and where to bring it on Saturday and what time. So basically a, a combination of our own crew, our crews, as well as what we can hire Pelican to do, what they're able to do on a Saturday. They only run five days a week. They don't run six days a week. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a matter of aligning uh, our resources with the problem, and uh, that, that's on our radar. Okay, and I just have a brief statement, uh, Mr. President, I want to read um, in regards to director appointments. Um, as council members, we have a duty and an obligation to do what we feel is best for Biloxi and its residents <clears throat> and employees. Sometimes those decisions are easy, sometimes they aren't, sometimes we all agree, sometimes we don't. Sometimes these decisions are stressful and even cause sleepless nights. The truth is this, sometimes this isn't an easy job, but at the end of the day, doing the right thing is sometimes hard. Every four years, the mayor appoints directors for each department and the council then votes on those appointments. Contrary to the belief of some, these aren't lifetime appointments, nor are they a right for any number of reasons. Each department is vital to the functioning, safety, and quality of life in the city of Biloxi. The success of those departments is because of the hard work of over 600 employees, not one individual. As council members, we have an obligation to do what we feel is best for the city of Biloxi and those 600 plus employees. The ones who protect us from crime and fire, when there's a medical emergency, a culvert collapsed, or a ditch that's clogged and needs to be dug out. We're appreciative of all of our employees and the work that they do for this city, whether it's one year or it's 50 years. In addition to that, we have an obligation to ensure that those employees work in an environment and a culture that is conducive to good morale so that they can best serve, protect, and provide for the citizens of Biloxi. Voting yes or no on any department head is something that I don't take lightly. When a yes or no vote is cast, it's cast for the good of Biloxi, its residents, and its em employees. No department head is something that anyone takes lightly, and I know that I do my research on and compile as much information as possible. I'm confident that my colleagues do and feel the same. The spectacle with the director's appointments that has played out publicly in the media was never supposed to be that. To those who went to the media trying to put political pressure on certain council members for simply doing their job while continually stirring the pot on social media should be ashamed of yourself. Thank you, Mr. President, and that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. <clears throat> a couple of things. Um, the Coliseum, they had a big rig event. I'm not a big rig guy, but I think it was, uh, what, these tractor trailers that pulled the... Yeah. So uh, when if I get two or three calls on the same topic, that's a high item in my ward, and I got a few calls that night. I think it was a Saturday night. Would that have been maybe last Saturday or the Saturday before? People wanted to know what all the horns were. And somebody <laughs> said, well, they had a big rig parade somewhere. I didn't see it coming. The, uh, the neighbor and some of these subdivisions didn't see it, but they heard it coming. 
and it's and some of these folks are trying to sleep. I don't know. That must have been about eight thirty or nine o'clock at night. That's when my phone started going off. But uh, I don't know if there's anything we can do. But th this particular neighborhood is between the mall and the Coliseum. Spring break, they're impacted with all the noise. Scraping the coast, they're impacted with all the noise. Now we add to that the big rig event, who knew? Uh, cruising the coast, sometimes with all the attendant noise, and they get tired of that. They get tired of their windows rattling at nine or 10 o'clock or two in the morning when the Coliseum opens the Pine Grove exit, the West Parking Lot exit, and people are streaming uh, through that neighborhood. So I. I think everybody can understand that. That's why I asked earlier about the noise ordinance. I hope we're moving forward on that. something we've got to work with the county on doing. The county controls the Coliseum. Those folks in that neighborhood, as you know, they pay more in county taxes than, than they do in city taxes. And they're entitled to some representation from the county as well. It's just a matter of who we control and with assistance from the county. That's what we're going to do right now. Hope you're effective.
State your name and sign in. Say your name clearly because it was her desk on the floor in the back. small business on Howard Avenue is the sense of community. It's not only a business district. It's, it's also a place residential where, where people have lived there for, for years and generations. And so being able to mix small business and residential has been very rewarding. So I'm not just showing up to work um, at a certain hour and then closing up the doors at a certain hour and going home. I'm mingling. I'm seeing, I'm seeing the families that live there and, and have lived there for years. And that, is, that makes my, my business so much better to be in the community. Um, one of the advantages of being at the Duxie is, is the tourism piece. And, and I'm able to meet people from not all over the country but all over the world. And most of the time when they're walking into my bicycle shop, it's a positive experience. They like what they've seen. They're surprised at what they see. Maybe they've had some, some different uh, visions of Mississippi. They come down here and actually smell the coffee, eat the seafood, meet the friendly people. And it's, it's, I get an overwhelming response of just how much they like it. One of the big questions I get is, I want to live in Duxie. I want to have a bicycle out in the yard. I want to see the city a different avenue than just taking a taxi or, you know, walking I can only get so far. So uh, today on, on the agenda you will see, a, you'll see an item where the city of Biloxi and my bicycle shop are trying to work together to provide, you know, rental bicycles. And, and I think the picture can get much bigger than that. It has to do about uh, providing a lifestyle opportunity for not only the residents, but people coming in to see the city. So um, people have asked me, well, well, Bart, can't you rent bicycles on your own? And I said, sure, I can. Well, the city of Biloxi can rent bicycles on their own. Why do you guys need to do it? so much better with the cooperation of the city. And I think the city can really benefit from what my bicycle shop has to offer as far as the experience and the lifestyle opportunity that, that we give people, you know, when the doors close down. So uh, I can't stay for the whole meeting, and I know this is not the, the forum for questions coming to me, but you can find me in the shop almost every day for all hours of operation. So if anybody does have any questions, please feel free to come by the bicycle shop. I'd love to speak to you in person about it. And I just think that this is a, a great opportunity for us to showcase what Biloxi has to offer um, with a little flair. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Luther. Anybody else on my left or right?
Mr. Higgins, your time is up. Thank you, Mr. Higgins. Anybody else on my left, your right, wish to address the council? Nobody on your right. Anybody on the back? Thank you, Mr. Gates. Anybody else in the back? Anybody wish to address the council? Last okay. call. All right, thank you. That brings us to the policy agenda. If the clerk would read the first item, item A, please. Ordinance to approve a zoning map amendment to authorize a change in zoning from RS10 low density single family residential to RM20 multifamily residential low density for the property located at 13160 Oval Market Road. Thank you. The motion was made by Mr. Barrett. The second was by Mr. Glavin. Mr. Mr. Barrett. Um, just last week we thought that we were is just a vote and so we have to do a second reading. And just as a side note, I did talked to the one homeowner that lived um, on the other end of the street, but it was sort of through the woods from him. And um, when I explained it was conditional use and that they wouldn't be able to do special events and there's a, a limited number of cars, he was actually um, accepting of the, the situation as long as, um, you know, he said that we enforced those things. Um, so he was, he was actually okay with that. So that's all that I... Mr. Glavin? I have nothing to add. Um, any council members have uh, discussion? I do have uh, I do have a handout. I have a few comments on this. Do we have an overhead projector? I don't think we I don't think we do anymore. Uh, Jared, would you feel comfortable if we can get online to go to the GIS site? Huh? I think, I think they're down. I mean, if it's working, it may not, it may not be up. Keith, if you, if you can't pull it up, that's, we'll let it go. Uh, Mr. Creel, if you, if you don't mind, and, uh, would you take one of these and hand the remainder to the folks at the, the administrative table? What I've done is I've, I've given you just a, a bird's eye view of where this property is located. It's in yellow. And um, 
just for the record, it's in the middle of a residential area, and you'll see at the top in blue you have uh, a zone that's agricultural and, and uh, a residential estate restricted. You can see where those are in blue, and everything below that is in a residential area, and our, our ordinance currently reads that short-term rentals are prohibited in residential areas. And there was some discussion about whether the parcels might be larger, greater than, or less than two acres, and it was noted that it, that was in the previous ordinance until these, the current land development ordinance, ordinances were adopted a, num a number of years ago. And my concern is, and I think it was noted in the Planning Commission, I know it was mentioned that this would be, could be considered or would be considered generally as spot zoning. Mr. Creel, I don't put you on the spot. You're not expecting this, but I'm thinking, does this appear to be spot zoning to you? Thank you, and, and just because the folks at home can't see this document or the folks in the audience can't view this document, roughly, I wanna say it's an area, it could be a little smaller than Sunkist, certainly as large as uh, Sunkist on the west side of Pops Ferry and the Sunkist Country Club and Ancient Oaks. Uh, all of that, uh, about, about that size is all residential and this council is considering putting a short-term rental in the middle of that. Um, I'm happy to hear if there's more discussion to follow or any other comments. Yeah, I, I'm, I would like I, to. I think there may be a few. Let me make. Okay, go ahead. I, I just want to respond to a couple of things. First of all, I think the councilman in that ward has done some due diligence and spoken to the resident in this area, and we've had an, the reason we we have these uh, ordinances and they get on for a week, at least a week or two, is to allow the public time to come to us and talk about their opposition or their thoughts. And I haven't seen any of that today uh, in the audience. Um, uh, with all due respect to Councilman Tisdale, he, he has an argument, but the director says you could go either way, you know, on this. So um, I think we have details and, you know, we'll put it to a vote and see where it goes. Mr. Barrett, um, just in, in regards to your statement about Sunkist, land mass and the amount of homes and the proximity of homes are two different things. Sunkist and this, I mean, I don't know if you've been down this road or not, but Sunkist and this are completely two different subdivisions. Sunkist, you can throw a, a, a paper airplane and hit your neighbor. You almost have to have an airplane to fly to your neighbor's house out here. Um, these homes. These homes are far apart on multiple acres. Sunkist is pieces of property that are 7,500, 10,000 square foot. So as far as making that comparison, that's not a, um, a good comparison. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Mr. Deming. He stole my thunder. I was, I was gonna make the same comment about, about the difference in the neighborhoods. Um, so I won't repeat that, but if you do have a house that you wanna do short term in, in Sunkist, We'll take that one up too. Any other comments down the line? Mr. Lawrence? It, uh, it's the same thing we're doing. You're not supposed to be putting short term rentals in residential neighborhoods. We stated that from the beginning. Y'all can compare it to what you want, it doesn't matter. We stated we was not going to do that. Put it in short term rentals in a residential neighborhood. So this whole neighborhood now will be turned into short term rentals. Is that what we're looking for in the city blocks? Don't have anybody living there? We had 348 short-term rentals so far, that you said, right? That's, that's over 700 some people we don't have living in the city of Bluxedale. That's 700 residents we lost. That's why the city's not growing. You grow from neighborhoods and small businesses. So the more short-term rentals you keep putting in there, and now you're breaking down the neighborhoods, so what are you gonna do, stop it anywhere else? No. Once you start doing this, you're gonna allow it anywhere, any neighborhood wants to do it. 
How are you going to stop it? It's not a good. It's not a good thing for the city of Bluffs. So no, I can support. I cannot support it at all. And my concern is, and then and then we'll call for the question. My concern in this is, if you buy a residential property in any neighborhood, uh, what we're doing today is setting precedent. And then granted, the nature and and uh, the size of the parcels in each subdivision are different. But for those homeowners out there that live in a, a subdivision in a residential neighborhood no matter how far away any commercial zoning may be you could wake up one morning literally to find a business operating next door in your neighborhood that's what we're doing today and i think that's why it's significant and that's why i mentioned that and uh with, with all respect to my my council members sure go ahead mr deming i don't want to start a, a debate about it but the, the, the statement that if you buy a residential home, then you should expect this and that. But this, this one property is a little bit different because I think it was actually licensed as a, as a bed and breakfast at one point. And so it, it, there is a little different expectation with this one individual property. So it's not, it, it, it's, it's another, it's, it's, it's an unfair um, comparison to make. Your statement, I think, applies, typically. But this is the one outlier that has a little different history than every other residential property that we'll probably discuss. Thank you, Mr. Creel. Was there, in, in researching this matter when it came up before the Planning Commission, my recollection is that the uh, community development had nothing on record to indicate that this was licensed to be used as a bed and breakfast. Right, and that area was annexed in 1999, I think. So anyway, my, my point is just if you're a residential homeowner in the subdivision, you could have a short-term rental coming uh, to you in the near future. So you may want to follow this issue. Okay. Think, Paul. I do have one, one Mr. question. Barrett. The number of vehicles that this allows, um, I know that that was discussed last meeting. What, what's the number of vehicles that that this will allow to be at that property. Okay. And then they had the parking lot out in the in the open. Okay. And that would include them having special events there, not just renting it for short-term rental. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Mr. Lawrence, did you have a? I don't ever remember that being a bed and breakfast ever. Whatever you said, they had that. They just had parties there. Probably they had to do what they wanted to do because there was no control back then under the county. So it never was a bed and breakfast. It was just a place they had a lot of parties at. And that's what's going to happen now. Same thing. You have no control over it. So now we're going to have the police sitting up there. It's got, they got 32 cars out there for a party. You're going to send the police out there to stop that? That's what you're creating here. You're creating more problems. Same thing. Bed and breakfast, short term rentals, and residential neighborhoods creates problems. So you're creating another problem here. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Any other comments? Call for the question. All in favor of the ordinance is presented. All opposed? It's approved on a 5-2 vote for the clerk. That brings us to the next item, item B. If the clerk would read that, please. Resolution rescinding resolution number 43021 and subsequently granting conditional use to authorize a short-term rental at 13160 Oval Market Road. I believe that was uh, moved by Mr. G Barrett. No, no, I'm sorry, this is first reading. Do the, the the procedural issues last time. All right, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Barrett. Is there a second? Second by Ms. Newman. Any discussion, Mr. Barrett? No, sir. This is just a continuation of what we just discussed for item A. All right, thank you, Ms. Newman. Any other comments? We call for the question. All in favor of the conditional use is presented. 
All opposed? It's approved on a 5 2 vote. Brings us to item C. Resolution appointing Eula Crowell to the Bluxy Housing Authority Board. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion. Oh, uh, I'll move it. Yeah, let Felix move it and I'll say. Motion by, <laughs> all right, the motion is made by Mr. Gaines. Mm -hmm. The second by Mr. Barrett. I second it. All right, I just need, it's like popcorn, Miss Newman. All right. I'm not over there. Any discussion? No discussion, Miss Euler, great person, great person, great individual, has a daycare. I think she'll do fine there. Thank you. Any comment, Ms. Newman? All right. We'll call for the question. All in favor? It's approved on a 7-0 vote. Thank you. Brings us to the next item, item D. Resolution appointing the Chief Administrative Officer for the City of Biloxi. I move it. That, that motion, right, and these motions were all made at the previous meeting. The motion was made by Mr. Glavin, and, the sec and it was seconded by Mr. Gein. So we'll, we'll go with that. Mr. Glavin, comment? Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm compelled to say a few things. I, I think uh, the man that uh, is being uh, proposed has done a tremendous job. Uh, he's always available, and uh, you know, I look forward to working with him for another four years. Good job. All right, thank you, Mr. Gines. Um, yeah, no real comments other than um, I know that uh, you're the CAO and uh, you put in for some increases on some directors' salaries. And um, if the directors are doing a great job, that means our employees are doing a great job. So I would like to uh, keep that in the back of our mind when it comes down to our employees. Um, that's, that's on that second and third tier level, you know, the ones that are trying to feed their families. So we need to really, really consider um, in this budget I, budget times to make sure we look at getting our employees some raises. Thank you. All right. Any other comments? Yeah, I think we have, to have a CAO. <laughs> well, I've been around it for 20 years, and we had some of them have no clue what's going on in the city of Bluxton. That's one thing Mike does. He stays on top of things. If you don't know it, he'll find out and give you the answer. That is his chief executive, I mean, associate officer. He does the job. Well done, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments, concerns? Okay, we'll call for the question. All in favor? The resolution is presented. All opposed? It's a 7 0 vote for the clerk. That brings us to item E. Resolution appointing city attorney and director of the legal department for the city of Biloxi. Well, we had a motion by Mr. Glavin, a second by Mr. Gaines. Mr. Glavin, any comment? Yeah, I have to, uh, again, hats off to uh, Mr. Abide. Uh, he's shown professional care. Uh, he, he researches the topics and keeps us informed, and uh, it's greatly appreciated. Great job, Peter. Mr. Gaines. Um, who are we on? We're on the oh, city Peter attorney. Line. We're on the city oh, attorney. Yeah, 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 we're good. No problem. <laughs> we're, we're on what's his name? Yeah, oh, what's his name? Yeah, what's his name? He's good enough. Yeah. Any other comments? <laughs> no other comments. Mr. Lawrence. Peter, make sure he's writing these contracts and make sure they're right the first time. You just got to stay on top of him. You, know, you got to learn to write contracts is the key, right. a big thing. We, we haven't approved the uh, legal budget yet, so we got that covered. Yeah. All right. Any other comments, concerns? There being none, we'll call for the question. All in favor? All opposed? No. That's a 7 0 vote for the clerk. That brings us to item F. If the clerk would read that item, please. Resolution appointing director of the Department of Community Development for the City of Biloxi. A motion by Mr. Glavins. The second was by Mr. Gaines. Mr. I guess Glavins. I've got to say something about our uh, director as well, um, Community Development. Uh, look, it's been a pleasure working with you and uh, looking forward for the next uh, four years. We've got a lot of work to do. There's a lot of changes throughout all these wards, and uh, it's a fast-moving uh, scenario each and every day, you know, as we develop. And we're depending on your hard work to get that done. Thank you. All right, Mr. Gaines, item F. Good job, Mr. Grill. <laughs> all right, any other comments? One thing, uh, we have to sit down with Jerry and work on our court system with him, too. 
to make sure we're doing the right thing, putting the right people in places. It's all these things we need to be adjusted. It's time to do it. You got four years to work with you, everybody. It's time to make sure the things are done right from the beginning. We here to help the citizen, protect the citizen, not abuse them. So we all got to look down at mind when we're doing everything. Thank you. All right. Call for the question. All in favor? All opposed? That's a 7 0 vote. That brings us to item G. Resolution appointing director of the Public Works Department for the City of Biloxi. Uh, okay. Mr. Glavin. Bill Ray, you know where all the uh, skeletons are for sure. And, uh, you know, your valuable resource over the years that you've put in here, that there's no doubt. We got a lot of work to do, especially in this department. You know, drainage and, and uh, keeping up with uh, our roads and drainage, that, that's no easy job. And it's going to be more difficult. And I, I hope this council recognizes this and gives you the resources and manpower uh, and ability uh, to, to make things better. So uh, looking forward to what we can accomplish. Mr. Gaines? No comment. He's real good. OK. Any other comments or questions? Yeah, we have one comment. The problem with Billy Ray is he wants to get in a hole of dig ditches, fix the pipes himself. He, try, he got to train the rest of these people to do it. You know, he's big and strong and most of them kids, they can't pick up a shovel of mud. So Billy just, get out of the way. I'll take care of that. That's what we're going to make. A, we got a t-shirt. Just call Billy Ray. That's all it is. Just call yeah, Billy get Ray. Get Billy Ray to take care of it. <laughs> he's laughing. He's, Billy Ray, am I lying or what? <laughs> just call Billy Ray. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll call for the question. All in favor? All opposed? It's approved on a 7 0 vote. Brings us to item H. Resolution appointing director of Department of Parks and Recreation for the City of Biloxi. Mr. Glavin. Oh, wow, Chief. You know, what, what can I say? I mean, there's. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm on the wrong one. I, 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 I you got it wrong, too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Pub, public, I mean, uh, Parks and Rec. Um, as I mentioned in my council report, uh, we got a lot of hard work here too. I mean, our job is not done. It, it's tough. And uh, we're depending on you to be tough. And we're depending if we do have uh, some increase in revenues a little bit, you know, how can we make our parks better for our kids, you know, and better for our, our tourists, uh, that sports tourism that comes in. And that's what they're looking at. This is what represents our great city of Biloxi is the experience that they can have in our, our sports uh, recreation and parks and recreation. So um, let's let's roll up our sleeves and get it done, Director. Mr. Gaines? Yeah, what Kenny said. Uh, any other any other questions or comments? Mr. Deming. Ms. Bell, um, I think I'm one of the biggest advocates of your department and one of the biggest um, opponents of your department as well. The uh, big issue that I have is the underuse of a lot of assets. We can draw people into Biloxi very easily, and I think the director of your pickleball department here, Tom, he's proven that. I think we need to really focus on bringing in bodies into our, into our baseball parks and our softball parks. The cities around us are doing that, and I think with a little increased revenue, if we have some money to spend, I think we need to invest in those assets if you'll invest time into getting use out of those assets. But thank you for being part of Biloxi. Mr. Lawrence, I think you yeah, that's another question. important job in the city of Bluxy. It's a job that you gotta be on hands. You gotta be on top of it. You gotta stay with it every day. You know, you gotta be out there available for anybody who wants to call to you, talk to you. Things need to be done in the park too. It's extremely important. Actually for the young people, the old people, it doesn't matter. It's part of Bluxy. So they need to be on call all the time. Be on be they got forty hours to work a week, be there to work. Make sure we do that. Call them. Respond to the people that call back. Because they're going to talk to us, we've got to talk to the directors. So that's the name of the game. All right, we'll call for the question. All in favor? All opposed? This is having no vote for the clerk. Brings us to item I. Resolution appointing director of the Department of Police for the city of Biloxi. Mr. Glavin. Yeah, and I jumped ahead of myself because, uh, uh, Chief, uh, I'm telling you, that thin blue line, we, we've seen it firsthand with you. And we've cried with you. And we, your job, with all due respect with all the other departments, is public safety and keeping us safe. And, and doing that uh, by proper training and making sure you got proper leadership as well to be able to, it, hey, one second matters. 
And uh, we feel that with you, we are so blessed to have your leadership uh, on in Biloxi. So congratulations. Looking forward to the next four years with you. Mr. Gaines. Yeah, um, Chief know that uh, I talked to him a whole lot. And, um, you know, and especially over the past years, uh, all the things that your department and your officers were doing in the community, um, just some of them when they stopped some of the kids and had a long talk with them. And that, that goes a long way. So I appreciate everything you're doing and reaching out to your officers uh, to let them know to be patient, especially during this COVID time. So thank you a whole lot for that. Any other comments, Mr. Lawrence? Definitely. Without a doubt, it's Chief Miller is probably one of the better chief of police we've had in the city in probably the last hundred years. The best. He's not first, he's tied for first place. The man just done an excellent job with all the trauma and all the problems they went through, and it was class, took care of everybody, the families. It's definitely a policeman. Thank you, John Miller. Thank you. Any other comments? I'd just like to add to that, Chief. Excellent job. Appreciate the job you do. I know whenever I come to see you or I work with your staff, they're always very professional uh, and effective. Appreciate the job you do. Call for the question. All in favor? It's approved on a 7 0 vote. Brings us to item J. Resolution appointing director of the Department of Fire for the city of Biloxi. We have a motion by, motion was made by Mr. Glavin. You know, this is probably the most emotional um, piece on this agenda today, but uh, you know, you, you look at the career of the man and uh, what he has accomplished and what, he, what his life means, not only in the fire department, but with his, in his church and his community, uh, you know, I know there's controversy brewing. I know there's uh, stories in the media circulating. You know, all that needs to, you know, run its course. But if you look at your life's work, I'm going to just speak for me. I'm, I'm proud of what you accomplished. It's not an easy job uh, leading those men and all those fire departments, you know, across our city. And um, I hope at the end of all this, uh, there's a win-win for everybody at the end of the day. So uh, you, you, have, you have my vote on this, and that's just my two cents. Thank you. Mr. Gaines. Yes, uh, we've went back and forth over this uh, quite a bit. And um, of course, uh, I've expressed some of the unreadiness that I had. And whichever way to vote go, we have a lot of work to do. So that concludes my report. Thanks. Any other comments? Mr. Lawrence. Yeah, I think uh, Chief Brony, uh, Took the fire department, we brought number two rating. Is anybody else in the state of Mississippi have a two rating like the city of Bluxa? That's awesome. Two rating. Right. Any other kind? The best, nobody's ever won. Me. So we had a two, so that's a good thing. That was a good thing for you, did for us, children and the people, the taxpayers, insurance people. Good thing. Thank you. Any other comments from council members? If not, I'll, I'll make a comment. <clears throat> Now, folks have asked me about this issue, and this is what I'd, what I'd tell them. This was prior to the last regularly scheduled council meeting. This last four-year term that just concluded is 208 weeks. For 206 weeks, I didn't hear a ripple, not a ripple, for 206 weeks. Uh, at that time, as they say, timing is everything. And this is that time of the year where the council affirms the appointments of the recommendations of the nominees that the, the mayor puts forward. So um, who, whoever does not want this chief to continue chose a very good time to raise these issues, whether they're justified or not. Uh, that being said, I got a call from somebody last night who said, have you seen what's, on the, what's in the Sun-Herald? So I, I went and looked on the Sun-Herald site and read the article. And, and my takeaway from this is, basically, this is something that uh, the issue was raised. It was brought to the state auditor's office. The state auditor said, fine, we'll 
kick it back. We're not going to deal with this. We're going to kick it back to the municipality to make a decision. Uh, that was in 2016. The matter was dealt with, as far as I know. Um, the people mentioned in that story, some of them have access to grind. Uh, and I don't know what the culture was, because I don't work in the fire department. I don't know what's gone on for 100 years or 20 years or whatever. But the fact of the matter is, from what I read in the paper, and by the way, from the, the, the other gentleman who's, who's making the charge, or the attorney that, that's uh, making those statements, that's, you hear their side. You don't hear the other side at this point. But having, having said all that, uh, I, I think if anybody on this side of the table had had questions, and I suspect some of us did, I know I did, I went and spoke with the mayor. The other thing is, I think there are always avenues for grievances to be pursued. There's a civil service commission. I understand there's a peer review. I didn't understand that what that was till somebody explained it to me recently. But um, right now, there's just a lot of drama, a lot of smoke. I don't know how much fire there is. Certainly, no pun intended. But uh, I just think it's a shame that for 206 weeks, uh, as far as I know, we're all satisfied with the chief's performance. But in the last two weeks, and I don't know people, I'm, I'm sure these councilmen are asked, I'm sure there are folks in the general public wondering, what's happened? Nobody's talking. I, I, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what happened. Uh, and that being the case, given what I know at this time, I'll be supporting Chief Boney on this. That concludes my comments. Okay, we'll call for the question. All in favor of the director as presented? All opposed? Okay, there's, yeah, there's no reappointment. Uh, the recommendation, the, the resolution was defeated on a 4-3 vote or a 3-4 vote, if you would, Gary. All right, thank you. We'll move on to the next item, the consent agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. I'll second. There's a motion by Mr. Glavin, a second by Mr. Gaines. And we'll start. Mr. Barrett, at your end, are there any items you wish to discuss on the consent agenda? Yeah, I just have a question on W. Could you explain that to me on the singer? Which I, I w. w. I don't have the I don't have the the access to pull that up. Um, I can read. I can. I can read my notes if you want to. Nathan, W? Yes, W. The um, Gulf Coast Restoration Fund for the Sanger repairs. Which one? For, for me, for the Sanger. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that's a grant, a grant application that we're submitting for a million dollars, and uh, the local match would be three million dollars, which in fact we've already ex expended Okay, so. um, to renovate and and uh, repair the Sanger Theater to this point. Is that accurate? That is accurate. And we're just asking for uh, the Gulf Coast Restoration Fund to give us another million dollars so we could finish the interior. Okay. That's all I have. No match is required. Okay. Additional it. match. Right. Mr. Glavin? I don't have any. No items. Mr. Dammer? Ms. Newman, Mr. Gaines, any items? None. Mr. Lawrence? Yeah, now, on H and I, it's con uh, concerning the Mercy Cross with the Catholic Diocese in the school. You terminate these contracts? We'll let, we'll let the city attorney answer that one. She, she sure he can handle that by himself? Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> yes, I can. 
Uh, this agreement was entered into after Katrina to allow um, the Boys and Girls Club to have a place for their activities. And it was a free lease. Uh, the diocese gave the city the right to use the Mercy Cross campus, and we had a sublease with the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, as you recall, the Boys and Girls Club is now being uh, relocated into the Nichols behind Nichols. And uh, they're not really using that facility now anyway at Mercy Cross. So what this is, uh, effective September of this year, at the end of the fiscal year, we're just notifying the diocese that uh, we no longer need to use the Mercy Cross property and we're going to turn it back over to them. So we'll be out of it completely, the city. Right. We've been we've been cutting the grass there basically for our as part of our in exchange for the free rent. So that that'll stop. On the M, the Port uh, Administration Building. What are we doing to that building? It was, for the most part, it was a roof that was repaired in that capital project. Was it, it was a roof and some uh, other leaks in the in the building. These were pre pre Zeta challenges that that building had. The, the the work has been completed, and we're closing the project. Okay, so I knew it was working on the roof, so they just finished the job and it's done. Mm -hmm. Don't know, it's, um, and the one we had, the, the 5CC, what were the fees they were charging us, the $1,000 they were charging us these fees? Well, while you have the floor, let me uh, let me say something about 5CC. Yeah. I, I'd like to have a correction made to that agenda item, and I'd like to be able to say it out loud. It's a very simple change. On the third, whereas, I'd like to change the word quarter, April through June 2021, 20, and replace that with the word year. Essentially, what we're saying is in this uh, resolution, we have, you'll recall, the Keystergate outside project had four different increments of funding that we got from the state. The first five million and the second five million were BP money. That money came to us to spend. It wasn't reimbursable. It just came to us, and we've spent it. The third increment was from a, it came not from MDA, but from the Department of Finance and Accounting, DF and DNFA. And it, it came with different strings attached to it. We have to keep that money in a separate account. Uh, and then we have to report quarterly to DN, DF and DF and A. Am I seeing that right, Peter? Hey. The Department of Finance and Administration. We have to report quarterly to them. In, one, in making that report, we have to include bank statements. The, uh, the agency picked up on the fact that our bank statements were showing bank charges which are not eligible for reimbursement. So we've got a situation now where we've we've got to pay back, at least temporarily, we get to pay back those bank charges so that, so that we have an eligible grant application. So all we're doing is we're, for the time being, until such time as we can work with Pe People's Bank on, the, on how they're charging us, we've got, you know, we've got to be able to put those charges back in so that, because we can't ask the, the agency to, to, to reimburse us. But we actually just paying the charges to clarify everything. Yeah, we, we think it's a bank error. We're just going to, it's just allow us to put the money in the account so our report, which is due at the end of this month, will be accurate. Right. Then we're going to go to the bank and we're going to fix it and we're going to yeah. repay the general fund with that money. All right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's everything. All right, I have one item, and that's item 5Q. And that, that deals with the uh, bicycle rental that Mr. Luther 
commented upon at the beginning of the meeting. And my, my only question is, is that an exclusive contract or a non-exclusive? I don't recall either term being used. I'm assuming it's a non-exclusive contract, Peter. That's non-exclusive, yes. All right, thank you. All right, um, there being no other, yes. We have to amend 5CC to note, okay. I'll entertain a motion to amend item 5CC using the CAO, Mr. Leonard's language, uh, that instead of using the word quarterly in a figure, it would be yearly and then a figure, correct? The word, just the word year. Just the word year. I'll entertain a motion. I'll move it. There's a motion to that effect by Mr. Glavin, second by Mr. Lawrence. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. It's a 7 0 vote to approve the amended amendment. Now we approve the amended resolution. All in favor? That's a 7 0 vote for the clerk. Okay. Uh, I think at this point we have to vote on the consent agenda. All in favor? All opposed? Any exceptions to be noted by the clerk? There are none. Thank you. That brings us to code enforcement hearings. Uh, at this time, we'll open a hearing for Robert A. Lynn, Robert and Lynn A. Flint Basket, 451 Cove Drive. Mr. Creel. Is there anyone here to speak on the matter of 451 Cove Drive? Okay. All right, thank you. All right, uh, this hearing is closed. We'll ne move to the next item, Deluxe Homes, 2044 Greater Drive. Is there anyone here to speak on this matter? 2044 Greater Avenue. There being no one, this hearing is closed. That brings us to the next item, item C. Mr. Creel. Is there anyone present to speak on the matter of 322 Hay Street? This hearing is closed. That brings us to the next item, item D. Mr. Creel. Okay, item E. So moved. There's a motion by Mr. Gines. There's a second by Mr. Deming. Any discussion? All in favor? That's 7 0 for a 30 day extension. Thank you. Item F, Mr. Creel. All right, thank you, Mr. Creel. I'll entertain a motion on the routine agenda. The mood. I'll motion second. by Mr. Lawrence. Second. A second by Mr. Gaines. Mr. Lawrence. Um, how's our pipeline this week? We got 1.9. Walk back in 1.9 again, 2.3. Huh? Yeah. Right. 
2.35 million came in last week. I'm saying that for the folks at home who are not lip readers. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Lawrence? No, that'd be it. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Um, all in favor of the routine agenda is presented. That's a 6 0 vote. Uh, nope, Ms. Deming's out of, excuse me, Ms. Newman's out of the room. That brings us to recess. Thank motion goodness. Motion to recess. Recess. Is there a motion by Mr. Lawrence? I'll second. Second by Mr. Deming. All in favor? Approve 7 0. We're in recess. Our next regular meeting is uh, next Tuesday at 1 30. And we'll take uh, about a seven or eight minute recess and then we'll start the budget workshop for non departmentals and insurance. So.